So this CASA XPS it stands for Computer Aided Surface Analysis. It's used a lot uh, by many people around the world. You'll see it quoted in many publications. We've got a university academic license to put on any computer at the university. Now what we'll be doing is we'll be processing survey spectrums, we'll process high resolution spectrums, we'll do some quantification and we can do these later. These are things that you can easily work out how to do. I'll show you the icons to do it. What we will end up with is what I end up with is a sheets like this, you see. There's a fully processed PCL. We're going to do that. I've given you a handout of PCL from the high resolution XPS of polymer book. We're going to process that. It's a fairly simple exercise but you learn a lot on just what to do with this curve fitting. Curve fitting is the difficult part. And I've put together something like this. I gave up after a while. It's, you know, you double click and single click. Um, it's easy one to just watch what I do here. Take your own notes, maybe come back to this later on. And the high resolution thing, this is very important, this peak width that is the full width half maximum. That's very important. I've seen a lot of rubbish fitting in the literature, you know, carbon spectrum with nine peaks and it's all a bit wishful thinking and um, very uh, um, specific. Now this is something, if you're using the software, make sure, if you download the software, it won't have the library in that's more applicable to my instrument. And the way you tell is you look for what's the relative sensitivity factor for carbon. If it's 0.278, okay, it's the Kratos library. If it's one, it's a elemental um, theoretical library. And it's very important too that I'll show you if you're doing with these two P peaks and only want to use one of the peak, you better multiply the sensitivity factor by 0.666. If you're looking at tin and all these and you only want to use one of these peaks, not, you know, I told you it was split, you need to change the sensitivity factor. Sensitivity factor applies to both the peaks. And this is the factor you've got to multiply it by. We, we will be doing that when we do titanium. As I said, I've got this book. Uh, it's a very good reference on carbon 1S, oxygen 1S, nitrogen, because it's a collection of high resolution and survey spectrums of very clean polymers, which have got very nice, well-defined structures, and you can get an idea of where the binding energy might be for a specific chemical group. So this is important. We refer to this all the time. I've given you a handout there of the PCL. And then you, this is really detailed curve fitting. This is carbon 1S but it's got some ruthenium there and you can see a great deal has gone into fitting this neatly to find out how much ruthenium and what binding energy there, there is. We will be doing that on one of them. The last one we do will be titanium with many different oxidation states. Okay, this is what we'll be doing towards the end. If you put in titanium metal, that's what it looks like, the titanium 2P. This, here's the metal, here's the oxidation state 2, 3, 4. And in order to fit that nicely, you have to apply some rigid fitting. The software is very good for the curve fitting. There's many things even in the literature on how to use the software. This one's here, and there's this one here, etc. I've got two books. You can borrow those. I've got two sets of this. This is general about the CASA XPS. Lots of things. And this is all very specific about very sophisticated curve fitting. But I can show you the basic things that you'll need to use most of the time. And as I said, we've got two copies of that. I've also got another book called a Casa Cookbook. It's about this thick. 
and it goes into all sorts of other uses of this software for presentation and you name it. We will need this. You've also got a copy of this. This is from this National Institute of Standards in the US database. It's a nice XPS database. It's free and you can get some idea of binding energies. Here I'm looking at the oxygen 1S from cadmium sulfate because we will need that when we do a bit of this fitting here. Here's the CASA XPS software main page. First one we're going to do is this PCL, a simple polymer, some data that I've taken. Now if you look up there, there's very simple to open up a file. This file, you know, you can use this or open. I'm going to open up this. And here's the survey scan. It's also got the high resolution scan of the oxygen and it's got the high resolution scan of the carbon. I'm just double clicking them. Back to the survey. Now you can see here that none of these icons are active. I'm not sure why they do this, but you've got to click this part of this active window to see them all come active. Now they're all active. You've got icons up here for copying and pasting. The main ones we use are this little group here for processing. This is for printing and help. Down here is more display things. Zoom in, zoom out, you know, go up, go down and change scales, all sorts of things. I only use mostly zoom in and zoom out and these, this little group. So you know the software can do a whole range of things. It's 99.9% .9 of the time you're using about four or five functions. So what you've got to do with the survey is first, I, I, I know what's there, but sometimes I mightn't be too confident if there's some unusual element. You come up here into the library. Click the library. Now it comes up with a list. I find it easier to use the periodic table. And it's, it's quite good for something like this. You go find the peaks and it's found. It's telling me I've got a carbon 1S, I've got an oxygen 1S. Yes, I agree with that. If I've got an oxygen 1S, I need big oxygen OJs. Right, not interested. There's also a little peak down here, the oxygen 2S. It doesn't say it there, but it's oxygen 2S. And I agree with that. Now, all you've got to do is go create regions. And it'll come up with the atomic concentration immediately tell you, there it is. It says you've got 24.6% atom percent oxygen, 75.4% atom percent carbon. It gives you all this other information. In general, you're not interested in that. So I always get rid of this. This is a default thing it puts on by coming up here into annotate and it goes into annotation history and this is what it put on and I get rid of it by just clicking on it and go delete and I want to put in my own regions minus this area position so I go regions I don't want the position I don't want the position I don't want that and I don't want that and I go in here, font, bold, let's make it look nice, and then go apply. And that looks a bit better. That's all you're interested in. Now I've got to check that it got the area right, because when it works out this atomic concentration, in order to get rid of all these other lines, I just go clear all elements. It would be better if it had clear all lines and all these lines are gone. I, I don't want to see the OJ things and all this descriptive lines. Now, what it sets up to generate this information is a little table and it's under quantify. So if you go into quantify regions, 
This is what it did. It took the oxygen, and this is the relative sensitivity factor. So it takes the area and it divides by this sensitivity factor and it gives you this number. Doesn't include hydrogen, they'll always add up to 100. So if we make this less, this will get bigger. So it's always relative. You don't say that's got 75 atom percent carbon in that sample. It's not. I haven't included the hydrogen, but it can certainly say I got 3 to 1 carbon to oxygen. So you look at ratios all the time. Now I'm going to check to see if they've got the area right and in, I must have this open, this table, and then I can zoom in like this. Zoom in. And this is the area it took. And it looks pretty good to me. If I wanted to change it, I can just grab there and go like that. Oh, that's no good. That's pretty good. Now I can move down the spectrum in the zoomed in mode by stepping right. And I'll come down eventually to the carbon and say oh, I could adjust that a little bit. Okay? These, and these have changed just fractionally. And I'm satisfied with that now. So that's finished. The survey's finished. I can zoom out and say good, that's finished. Now I want to go in and look at the chemistry of the oxygen. We've done a scan here, we've done a scan there at high resolution. This has been done with 1 EV steps from 1200 to naught. So the peaks don't look super. If I zoom in here, I'll zoom in again, I'll zoom, oops, zoom out. So this is zoom in and zoom out. Zoom in here, zoom in. I'm seeing not much chemistry there. I can see a little bit of a change in the shape on the left-hand side. And this is a very strong peak. Let's go in and look at the carbon at high resolution. Well, it's divided it all up. This was one big peak. Now it's gone to better resolution and we've got one, two, three. Now I'm going to fit this and resolve how much of this, how much of that, how much of that. And we'll also do how much two oxygens. The oxygen in the survey was just one big broad peak. So I come into the carbon. I've got to have this open. I've got to go to region and I've got to get a baseline. It already knows it's carbon because when we take the go, we call it carbon 1s. So it already knows those. And I just simply go create. And the software takes the limits, complete limits, but bring them in closer to the finish of the peak. Don't leave them out there. I'm going to bring this one into about here, and I'm going to bring this one into about here. OK? Now this is what, that's the region. We're going to divide it up into components using this fitting. So I've got to go components. And then I go create. And it puts one peak in, but it tries to just give me an average. And as I said earlier, what's very important is this full width half maximum. Okay? Now for carbon in polymers, it can range from about 0.9 to about 1.3. This is the width. They're talking about this width. If I make a very thin width, I can put in about 20 peaks. Absolute rubbish. Okay? I've got to judge the width of the peak by looking at the, how well this peak coincides with here. And you can see it's too wide. So if I come in here and I'll reduce this down to 1.0, Everything you do in this table, you've got to push enter. Now it's changed the width. Of course, the area stayed constant, so I've got to grab the top. I might have to reduce the area a little bit so I can grab the top. And I'll grab the top of the peak with the mouse and bring it up here. Oh, that's not a bad fit there. So it's telling me the width of the, all these peaks 
is somewhere around one or smaller. And then I come into here this full width, half maximum constraint. I'm going to make sure they don't go too much outside one. So I'm going to give them the limit of 0.9 to 1.1. So you come in here then, constraint. At the moment the constraint's from 0.2 to 5.75. Don't leave it like that, you'll go crazy doing this fitting. So you come back here and I'm going to make it, I might make it 0 0.85, comma, 1.1. Enter. Now I've got a peak that's reasonable for this particular set of data. Now I've got to add at least three more peaks here. And the quickest way I've found to do it, I could go create again and change everything. The best way is to go copy and paste. Now I wish I could click here and paste it here, but I can't. It pastes it over the top of this one. You watch. And I've got to move one to the side and bring the next one down into here. Bring this one back. Now when I've got a group like this, this is the carboxylic group, carbon with two oxygens. I'll have a carbon next to it that'll be shifted from 285 by about 0.4 or 5. In that list in the first lecture there was a list of carbons and one of them is the one that's next along closest to that. So I've put it in here and it has to be the same size as this one. For each one of these there's going to be one of those. But I'm now going to add another peak here by going copy and paste. I move this to the side and I bring this one into here. I move this one back. It's a little clumsy but I found it's the easiest way without going in and changing this. I've fixed the width, that's very critical. So now I want to copy this one I like to keep them in order from low binding energy to high. So that when I'm looking at a summary at the end, that's, you know, the, they're, they're in some logical order. So now I take this one and go copy and paste. And then I bring this one to the side a bit, take the new one out to here, bring this one back. I can almost fit it by hand manually, you see this? I bring this one back into here. I'm getting close, but it's got this mathematical fitting function that'll give you the best fit. So I go fit components and it's done it. But it's made this one very big and I know that's not the case. It should be the same size as this one. So I go into B and I'm going to make B equal to D. I come into area constraint. So I clear this out and I'm going to make it D times 1. The area of B is going to be the same as uh, D. So I push enter and then I go fit. And now I've got a pretty nice looking spectrum. If I want to see how good the fit is, you can come up here and have a look here. Residual. That's not too bad. If it's less than two, it's good. If it's less than one, it's really good. And I've got one carbon here, two carbons, three, four. I'm going to get rid of that residual. The D's just toggle them on and off. And I'm going to do the carbon, uh, the oxygen. Again, click here, region, create. Bring it in bring it in, component, create. See it's put one big peak there. Now I know oxygens vary from about 1.2 to about 1.4 or 5 in width. They're slightly bigger. Don't ask me why, I don't know. Um, they're just a little wider. Now I'm going to try and get a good fit. See this is horrible. Look at this. This should be matching here and it's gone to a width of 2.5. I'm coming in here 
and I'm going to try 1.2. Enter. Again, it's gone very high in the area. So I come into here, go there and reduce it a little bit so I can grab the top of the peak and bring it up here and say, how are we going? Oh, it's even still a little too wide. See how it's not matching here? I'm going to go down to 1.1. Oh, I'm getting close now. Not, oh, that's nearly right. So the width's very close to 1.1 EV. This is this width here. So I'm going to go in and freeze it. I'm going to put here 1.0 comma, I might go up to 1.3. Now I need to add another peak. There's certainly two there, so the simplest way is copy and paste. Move this one to the side. Okay, oops. Better go back. And bring this one down into here. Bring this one back. I can almost fit it again, but then I go into fit components. Beautiful fit. Let's have a look at the error. Come into here. Again, it's pretty good. So now I've fitted the two, and what I need to do now is charge correct them. So get rid of that. And I like to put them both in here. Using control, double click, I've got oxygen here and carbon here. I like to look at both of them, so I come up here, page layout, let's make it four tiles. So here's the oxygen, here's the carbon fitted. This one's coming in about, let's go to the carbon, it's coming in at 282.0. It should be 285. This is the carbon carbon. These are carbon oxygens. So what I've got to do now is shift the spectrum and I've got to shift them nearly 3 EV. So what I've got to do is use this peak to do the shifting. So the fact that I've got that clicked and I come in and click this, I can come up here into processing. This is the only thing you'll use in processing most of the time is calibration. And the fact that I've clicked the carbon here and I've clicked this component of the carbon, when I click component here, it'll put that value in. 282.036. I want it to be 285. So I go in 285. Now I don't know why they put this in. I wish I could get rid of it. You need to tick that. You need to tick that. But don't tick apply because it'll only shift the carbon. We want to shift the oxygen and whatever other element we would have taken all the same amount. If you click carbon you'll wonder why, why are my oxygen's in the wrong place. So I wish I could rub that line out. <laughs> it annoys me a bit and you've got to go apply to selection because we've got both of them in here. They talk about it, this of what you've selected. And you'll see both of them move. This is now changed and this is changed. Now what I can do now is put on top of here a summary of all the different species, one, two, three, four, four carbons, two oxygens, and I can start looking at the binding energies because they're very close to absolute. We've shifted them. And I can then go and look in this book and I can even see how close mine agree with what was in this handbook. So I come up here now and go into annotate. I want to put it on here. Put it on the carbon. So I go annotate. I don't want to put any text. I could write on there carbon 1s or whatever. I want to put in quantification. And I want to put in components. I've divided it up into all these components. So I click components. Now I don't want that. I don't want that. And I don't want that. 
I want the position. I don't want to include this. This is a funny table. It's negatives and positive. Uh, I want the concentration. And I'm going to go font bold. OK. Apply. And let's have a look. Here they all are. So here's the... I, I can rename them now. So I'm looking here. We've got one oxygen of 532.1. If you looked at a table, that will be the oxygen. I'm closing that off at the moment. Closing that. Coming into here to oxygen. And I'm going to call this... This is the oxygen doubly bound to the carbon. If you've got that handout, you'll see that there's a table in there. And it should be coming in around 532.1, is it? I haven't got a... To... 532.2, OK, pretty close. And then this other one is coming in at 5... Mine's coming in at 533.5. This is the oxygen singly bound to the carbon. Then we go to the carbon and I can start label the carbons. This is the carbon bound to carbon in this polymer. You can see the structure. I think they give you the structure there. So this is the one and I've used that as the reference at 285. Then I've got this carbon which I said is the next one along. It's this carbon. One closest to these two. That little group's having a little effect on it and shifting it by about 0.5. Enter. Everything I do in this table, I have to push enter. This is the carbon singly bound to oxygen, which is coming in at 286.5. Is that the list, same in the list? What did they get? 0.5. And then we come up here, and this is the carbon with two oxygens. And now, these should be in the ratio. One, one is to 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 three. Well, it's not too bad. There's one. This has gone a little high. I don't know why. That's nearly one. This one's a little less. But in general, it's pretty close to one is to one is to three is to one is to one is to one. Because if you look at the structure, there'll be one of those, one of those, two of those. And when you've got these numbers pretty close, you're then fairly confident you've done the fitting right. This is a very simple case, and it's coming out. Then I finally put on here, in the same thing, here's the, the survey, and that's that data finished. Now what you should be, what I should be doing as I go, go along, I should be saving things because this software for some reason hasn't got a go back button. It is so annoying. So you've got to keep saving and if you make a horrible mistake and don't know how to get out of it, you've got to close it off and open it up again. I, I don't know why they haven't included that. So I would, would have been saving these all the way along. So that if I made a horrible mistake, I, could, I wouldn't have to go through the whole lot again. So that's finished. That's a full data processing of a simple polymer, carbon and oxygen, and here's the fitting and the fitting. We'll do an inorganic material now, and it's a bit more complex. I took a crystal of cadmium sulphide that I had, it had been lying around for a long time. I didn't scrape the surface or clean it. I took a spectrum. So we'll come here now, file, open. And here it is here, CDS. Open. Again, look at this, a bit more complex. Polymers are simple, there's only carbon and oxygen or carbon, oxygen, nitrogen. This is cadmium very high atomic number, lots of peaks, there's sulphur there. I need to find out just what I've got there. So I close this off and go through the normal routine. Click here, go to the library, 
periodic table, oh sorry, library, periodic table, find the peaks. And you can see, wow, it's found a lot. I don't believe some of it. This is where you've got to have a bit of an idea of what peaks related to cadmium are being interpreted as beryllium and gallium. So I come here and say, no, I haven't got any beryllium. It's a cadmium peak. I haven't got any gallium. If you look in the handbook, I've got the spectrum of cadmium would have all these peaks. Here's Auger peaks. There's cadmium. These are the main peaks, the 3D. There's all these other peaks. It's also picked up sulphur. Good. There's two peaks for sulphur, the sulphur 2P and the sulphur 2S and it's also picked up carbon and it said there's a little bit of nitrogen there. Don't believe it. That's because cadmium's being interpreted as being nitrogen. Then I go create regions. Get rid of all these lines by clear all elements. Now again we've got this table with all these. I wish I could change it so we only had that and that. So I go into here, get rid of what they put on, and go to regions, and it's already there, font bold, okay, apply. Now we're getting somewhere. I've got this oxygen, I've got this carbon, you see it's pretty dirty. Here's the cadmium. Oh, I should have more than that, so there's something wrong with the area. This is where I have to now check that it took the area right because it hasn't in this case. It uses a default width and cadmium's got two peaks so it's really only, uh, you'll see in a minute when I zoom in. So now I'm closing this off, closing that off, I must open up the quantification. This is the table it made. Then I can zoom in. I say let's start at oxygen. Zoom in here, zoom in. Oh that's pretty good. You know the area of the oxygen's pretty good. Now come down here. Oops, didn't get the cadmium too well. I should be taking the area of both these peaks. So I'm going to move this up to here. And you can see the backgrounds here and then it's stepped up quite a bit. When you've got a big change in the background, it's a bit more preferable to use what they call a Shirley background. You've just got to type in S. It doesn't change it too much, but it's S. The Shirley background takes care of the fact that the background changed from the start of the peak to the end. Now when the background's the same on each side, doesn't matter, Shirley and then are still linear. Shirley ends up linear. Um, I use it for these ones where we've got the change in there. I'm moving along in the zoomed in mode. Oh, this one. Next peak I'll find is the carbon. That's pretty good. I come down here and here's the sulphur. I might adjust that a little bit. Okay, here's the sulphur 2P. Now I zoom out and have a bit of a look. Oh, lots of carbon. I got that much carbon, I'm going to have some oxygen associated with it, although that's very high oxygen. If I look at the cadmium, it's called CDS. I should, for every sulphur, one cadmium. So I should only have 16 here. So I need to say, what's going on here? This is where the high resolution spectrum will tell me what's going on. This is the surface of a cadmium sulphide crystal that's been sitting around for years. As you can see, lots of carbon, lots of oxygen. Shouldn't have any oxygen, shouldn't. If I took this crystal and cracked it in the ultra high vacuum, you can buy special things for opening or cracking things in a, so they never see the atmosphere. I would get a beautiful cadmium and sulphur. If I left it overnight, it'd probably change a little bit, even in the vacuum chamber. 
little bit of oxygen and probably get onto the surface. Anyway, this is not looking too much like pure cadmium sulphide. So let's have a look now at the at the oxygen. Let's do a bit of curve fitting. We'll start with the oxygen. Come into here, into this table, region, create. See, I've still got a Shirley background, but you'll probably find that when I get it here, it ends up linear anyway, because the background's, see, it surely only applies when the background is up here and changes. So here we've got one peak. I'm now going to add some components, create. Again, this is too wide. It's not fitting there. It's trying to fit one peak there. It's gone to 1.75. I'd think we'd be better using cadmium here. I've got. I'm going to try one. 1.3. Oh, 1.3. Enter. Naha, this is looking a bit better. If I come down here, it's not a bad fit, and it won't be. So I think I've got here three oxygen peaks. And I'm a bit comfortable with this 1.3. Okay? This is not a polymer where it's 1.2 or very low. This is a real surface covered with some junk. I'm going to give it a little bit of a freedom here by going 1.3 comma 1.6. That would be the upper limit. And then I'm going to put one in here and I'm going to go copy and paste. So I put another one in. You can see this is real-time fitting. It's rather neat software. Bring this into here. And then I want to add another one. Click this one, copy and paste. So I bring this back into here. This one down into here. Bring this one back. Not too bad. But let's go and fit it. OK? It's given me three oxygens. And the, the, the goodness of fit, oh, it's not too bad. OK? We're going to come back to that later because I gave you a handout of an oxygen from cadmium sulphate. And we will need to address that in a minute. So I'm going now to the cadmium. Now here's the cadmium 3D five halves the cadmium 3D three halves. 3D peaks are split. Now I'm better with this fitting to use just one of these. Because this is, a, so this is always going to be here and always going to mirror what's in here. So I'm best to use this one. So I go region, create. I'll get rid of, I'll get rid of this. And it's still got the Shirley. That doesn't matter me. I could have linear. It won't make any difference. I'm bringing the limits into about here. OK? Then I'm going to go component. Before I do that, the fact that I'm using one peak, I've got to change this sensitivity factor. In the handout I gave you, it's multiply this by something. I forget what it is. I've got the figure here. I've got it here needs to be multiplied by 0.6. So this sensitivity factor is 6.623 multiplied by is 3.94974. So I come in here and go 3.974. Enter. OK? That's important, otherwise the numbers won't, won't be any good at all. Now I'm going to add a component, create, and then go fit. And that's not too bad. And I'm going to come in here and change the sensitivity factor there as well. 3.974. Enter. Let's go to the carbon. This is typical of rubbish carbon you'll see on lots of samples. Looks like that. Someone published something said, you know, they took quartz, they took gold, they took something and they exposed it to the... They get a spectrum like this. Carbon-carbon, some carbon oxygens. 
we're not interested in solving the chemistry of the carbon junk. We're very keen to know exactly where this peak is because we want to use that for the charge correction. It's so important. So I'm going to fit it, but not going to be too concerned that I'm trying to solve what the junk is. Region create. I come in here, get, get the baseline, component, create. Well, that's not too bad. It's a little wide. See that? It's missing. I'm going to go down to about 1.2 or 1.3. I'll try 1.3. That's not too bad. Oh, it's pretty close. It's not perfect, is it? I'm going to go then and give it a range of 1.25, comma 1.35. Just give it a little bit of this is giving it some just a little bit of variability. So then the simplest way to add another one, as I said, is copy and paste. Take this peak, bring this one into here. For sure there's one there. Bring this one back. I like to keep them in order, so I click here and go copy and paste. As I said, I'm not too concerned about solving it. I just want to get a reasonable fit. This one, copy and paste. So I think there's four carbons there, and it looks very much like typical junk and then I go fit. This one's very small. Okay, I could even get rid of it if I wanted to. But what we're mainly after is the position of this peak, which is 280 point, nearly 281. Okay, now we do the sulphur. Sulphur's interesting. Now the sulphur, we look at the sulphur 2p peaks. Now the 2p peaks are split in the ratio 2 is to 1. This is the sulphur 2p 3 halves, the sulphur 2p 1 half. And there's some broad peak up here too. We must take that into consideration. So now I go region, create. I'm going to fit this part first, and I come into here, component, create, and I'm going to just simply go create and go fit. That's a pretty nice fit. This is the one we're interested in. How much we need to add these two together. At the moment it's coming in at 157.5. We haven't charge corrected it because I know that sulfides come in around 160, 161. So immediately I see this as, oh, they haven't charge corrected. No other sulfur, sulfur peaks come any lower than about 160. So now we've got a reasonable fit there. These should be in the ratio 2 is to 1. They're not too bad, are they? This is 556 and that's 29. Not too bad. I could make them the ratio 2 is to 1 by simply coming in here and go, B's got to be A times 0.5. Enter. Then I go fit, it'll hardly change anything. But now they're in the ratio 2 is to 1 as they should be. Doesn't change the binding energy, just makes the fit a bit better. Okay, we're going to shift these peaks now. Double click the oxygen, double click the car uh, cadmium, double click the carbon, double click the sulphur. Now come in here and always look at them because sometimes you might have one missing and forget. Have a look, I've got four. There they all are. And it's already put this on for me. I can come up here and get rid of it. I'll get rid of that and put it on again. Now I haven't shifted them yet, but I can come in here now to the carbon. I'm going to close that off. I've clicked there and I want to use this one. Click here. Come up here into processing. Calibration. Now if I click component, it'll put the value in. Now I know this is junk and not a polymer. I'm going to use 284.8. If I published this stuff, I'd, put, I'd have to tell them I used 
carbon one is from adventitious carbon at 284.8. Some people might use 284.6, some might use 285. And I don't know, click here, click here, don't click apply, click apply to selection. Now they're in their right position. And I can start putting on one of these, I'll put it on the sulphur, a summary. Come up here into annotate, uh, quantification, components, don't want that, don't want that, don't want that. Apply. Here they all are. Let's close that off. Here's our carbon at 284.8. I can come in here now and start labelling things. This is the carbon carbon. I always label them as much as I, as I know. Now this one's coming in at 286.3. That's a carbon singly bound to an oxygen. We've got another one about 280. This is carbon, very weak. It's carbon doubly bound to oxygen. And here's carbon up here at about 289. That's the carbon with two oxygens. Always the same, like that. The reason I've labelled those is I want to try and account for all this oxygen. Okay? Because I want to try and work out just what the chemical composition of this crystal surface is. So now I've labelled them. I go into the oxygens. Ah, before we go any further, I'm going to come into the sulphur. I should have done this. I forgot. I'm going back to page one, I go back here to the sulphur and I haven't finished the fitting of the sulphur. I've neglected this peak and I know that this is a sulphur peak and in the early part of the lecture there I showed you a table where there was a big difference in the sulphur binding energies between sulphides and sulphates. This one's coming in around 169. If you go to any sulphur binding energy table, you'll see that that's a sulphate. So I'd better put this peak in because it's going to account for a lot of the oxygens. SO4, four oxygens. So I'm going to come in here now, region, create. I'm going to put that piece in, create. I'm going to bring this up into here. Bring this up into here. Let me bring it down into here a bit. And go create. Component, create. Fit. So it's given me one broad peak for the sulfate. And I come in here and I better start labelling these sulphurs. This is the sulphur 2P3 halves from the sulphide. This is the sulphur 2P1 half from the sulphide. And this peak is all from the sulphate. Now I'm just closing, I'll minimise that. I'm putting them all into my table again. One, double click, double click, double click. Come up here to four. Now we've got the table here. I should make that a little smaller. I'm going to come in here and go get rid of that one. And I'm going to put this on again and reduce the size of the font. Instead of 11, we'll make it 9. Apply. That's better. Close that. So now we're getting the numbers. Now I know we've got sulphate there, about one and a half atoms. So I'm looking for an oxygen that might be four times that. So it'll have to be six. I come up here and say, well, this one's pretty close. Now look at that table that I gave you from the NIST. It's got cadmium sulphate oxygen in it. 
Where should it come in? 531.7. Well, I'm satisfied now my fitting of the oxygen is good because I've got the right binding energy. I could go in and fix it if I wanted to. I can go into the oxygen and say, right, let's get the oxygen up here, get up this table, and the oxygen, the one at 531, I'm going to make it exactly 531.7. enter and then I come into position constraint click here uh, this one position constraint come back 531.7 comma 531.7 it's not going to move now when I do the fitting and I can come in now and fit the oxygen and it doesn't change it too much and what did we end up with we come into here what do we got 5.5 we got 1.4 nearly four times so this oxygen I can come in and say right I know what that oxygen is so I come into into here go to the oxygen components this is the oxygen X SO4 Now we've got another oxygen here. At, oh no, this is the one at oxygen 531.7, isn't it? I've got them just wrong there. Now. Yeah, this is the one X. This is the one X SO4. This one's very close too, so they're very, two of them are very close together. One of them I know will be oxygen doubly bound to the it'll be oxygen doubly bound to the carbon and the other one about 533 will be the oxygen singly bound to the carbon but I'm starting to look close I'm not so sure of that because if I say here I've got what have I got there carbon 4.9 this one's not too bad yeah that's all right I look at the cadmium, here we've got what, 26 point something, the sulphur here is, they're all overlapping, it looks like about 19. What we've actually got here is some cadmium oxide. Okay, and the oxygen is included in here somewhere. If I went into this NIST table, I'd probably find that cadmium oxygen comes in somewhere close to one of these because I've got just got too much cadmium. The sulphur's very neat. See, we've got here, uh, uh, here's the cadmium here, 20, what's that, nearly 27. Uh, if we take the sulphide, we've got 18 point something. If we take the cadmium sulphate, there's only one, one and a half, so that makes it 90, about 20. We've still got five extra cadmiums. And if you look up any cadmium binding energy things, you'll probably find that cadmium oxide binding energy is the same as the cadmium sulphide. So I can't see it in the cadmium. So this is what you've got to do. It, it, you know, this is, can be backwards and forwards and take a half a day if I wanted to nicely sort out. I've got to get the numbers close, the binding energies have got to be close, and then I say, oh, I've, I've got it. Because the carbon's confusing me. There's a lot of carbon oxygens. Be better if they weren't there. So the cleaner your samples, the better. Okay. As I said, oxygen's a, a difficult one early. But it's coming out not too bad. And if you look at the binding energy of your sulphur, 161.4 or 3, if you look up cadmium sulphide, you'll find the sulphur 2p three halves comes in there. And the cadmium comes in at 405 point whatever it is. Okay? So binding energies are right. These are, this is difficult. This is neat. I've got a little bit of sulphate on the surface of the cadmium sulphide crystal. And that's taking care of some of the oxygens. So this is what you have to do. 
if you want to really get get it all sorted out you may not be interested in that you might just be interested in the cadmium and whether there's any sulfate on the surface okay all you need to do is fit the carbon and just stick it in and say right my ratio of sulfate to sulfide is 1.5 to 18 okay and then if you took this out and gave it a scrape probably this disappears and all this carbon disappears etc I'm just trying to uh, demonstrate to you just what's involved in this curve fitting and fully processing some of this high resolution data. So we need the carbon even if we're not too care about what what the oxides are but it was helping me there because I would have been puzzled if I didn't do oxygen I would have said why have I got so much cadmium there? And what's telling me of that is I've got a uncompensated oxygens and if I look then I say well I'm now confident I've got cadmium oxide there I can't tell it from the cadmium because it's the same if I take a mixture of cadmium oxide and cadmium sulfide I think I get one peak just like that the binding energy is so close even cadmium sulfate do they say in there no that's the oxygen I think even cadmium sulfate the binding energy might be very near the same so sometimes the chemistry is not in one species alone you have to look at the combination we'll go on to the next one we've got one more to do and here's some titanium dioxide from Aldrich I don't know 99.9 .9 something percent pure now all titanium samples are very reactive I never see clean titanium I see very clean silica you take silica powder heat it up to 800 or something carbon I can hardly see it in the survey scan this is always look at the carbon let's see how much is there so if you looked in a handbook I've got of the elements you'll see that this is from the titanium, this is from titania, these are all from titanium. But we can come in here again, straight in here to the library. Periodic table. Find the peaks. It's made one mistake. It said I've got sodium there. That's because sodium comes in up here. But you must be aware that titanium's got these Auger peaks. So it's confusing itself by saying that one of these OJ peaks from the titanium is the sodium 1S. So you've got to have a bit, so I know there's no sodium. This is 99.99%. Untick the sodium. It's got titanium, and there it is. I can then go create regions, clear all elements. Again, go up here into the annotate get rid of that one and put in my own apply next thing is to check the areas so then I open up this table see how I'm using the same things all the time open up this quantification table regions that's what it developed and then I zoom in on the oxygen zoom in and say so that's not too bad I'll go down here Oh, that's pretty good for the titanium. I certainly need the Shirley background. Of course, both of these peaks. Titanium 2P three halves, titanium 2P one half. Go further down to the carbon. Oh, it's been excellent. And if I look here, I've got Ti about 22. If it's TiO2, I should have 44. I've got too many that's because this is interfering these carbon oxygens so let's have a look at what we've got here's the oxygen and that's interesting this should be one single peak but we've got a couple of other little peaks so again I go into region create and I fit it bring these bring these limits in component 
create. Try and get a good fit here. It's not too bad. See, this is quite low. Inorganic oxides give fairly sharp oxygen peaks, and that looks like it's going to be around one. I've made a note here, probably, uh, yeah, one to 1.3. So I'm going to not let it go any more than one is the minimum, 1.3 the max. And a simple, do the same thing again, copy and paste. Bring this one to the side and bring the new one down into here. Now, looks like I've got another one. So you use the fitting a bit to establish how many. The width's so critical. If I had this at 1.5, it wouldn't fit there very well, but it'd probably fit this with two peaks, which isn't correct. Copy and paste. I put in another one, and there it is. Bring this one back, and go fit. Very nice fit. I've only displayed the three oxygens here. I can get rid of that by going into annotation history, and get rid of it. Okay, let's go to the titanium. The 2P3 halves, the 2P1 half. Area ratio, 2 to 1. Compose, region, create. Bring this back into here. Bring this a little more into there. That's pretty good. See, I wanted that background to coincide there. So then I go component, create. And then I go create again, fit. That's all I'm interested in that. That's a nice fit. I'm more interested in how much, which is nice, and the binding energy of this. Go to the carbon. We needed that. This looks similar to the carbon on the cadmium sulphide. Okay? Typical junk, as I say. It looks very similar. Not interested in resolving it again. I'm interested in getting an accurate measure of the peak here. So region, create. Bring this into here. I try to select the midpoint of the noise. You don't select a high point or a low point, but somewhere in the middle. Component create. Oh, that's not too bad. That's one point. I'll try 1.3. Oh, that's better. So I'll make it go from 1.25, comma, 1.35. Enter. Copy, pay. Oops, no, I didn't want to do that, so delete. Take this one, copy and paste. Bring this one to the side, bring the new one down into here, bring this one back, take this one, copy and paste, bring this one to the side, this one down into here, bring it close proximity, fit. Finished. Because we want to know this and use this for our charge correction. So now, double click the oxygen, double click the titanium, double click the carbon. Page display four, look at them. Now I can put on the titanium, I'm going to put the result on there. I can put the result on at any stage, no matter what I do it'll shift everything anyway. But we'll shift them first, come into here. Click this carbon, click this. Come again up here. Processing, calibration, component, 281.4, I'll use 284.8 again. Click here, click here, don't click that, click this one. Now they're in their right position. Let's have a look at the binding energy of the titanium. I'm going to put on here a summary. Up here, annotation. Quantification, components, exclude that, exclude that, exclude that, apply. And what have we got for the titanium? 458.68. Here's my titanium folder. My summary says TiO2 should be 458.6. So, oh, okay. 
284.8 seems to be a good calibration for this one. If I use 285, I'd be out a little bit. So I've made myself a little summary after looking at all these references and discarding some of them. And if we start looking now, if we add these two titaniums together, they're about 20 point something, and we look at the oxygen, well, it's not too bad, is it? There's a bit of oxygen here, so I can come in now to the oxygen and go through my normal, let's close that, close that, um, go to the oxygen, and I say most of it is from the, the TiO2. Now, I know that a lot of these things have hydroxides on the surface. They've been exposed to the air, there's water vapour, and the oxide peak is in general about one to one and a half away. Well, if we look at this, we've got one here, 529.8. Yeah, that's nearly one to one. So I come in here, I'm sure this is the OH. So on the surface, there's some TiOOH. And the other one, it's 530, what's the next oxygen coming in at 532? I'm not so sure. That's probably an oxygen from the organics, you know. Again, having the carbon there that's a l rather strong is creating a little problem <laughs> with the balance. But it's certainly helping us with the getting an accurate binding energy. And again, I just then put this one on here. And that's a complete data processing of that. What I've found out is, yes, machine's working good. I should be using 284.8. I can come in here and I better label that. That's the carbon carbon reference, enter, and I tend to just print that out then and keep it because I then say, okay, use that for the reference and this came in nice. Oh, there's some OH there. There's a lot of carbon on here. Just about every titanium dioxide I look at has a lot of carbon. Okay. It's very reactive. And that's a complete summary. I don't see anything else in here. Uh, in the next one we'll see little bits of something else and I can show you how to add something that's very small that the survey doesn't identify when you go into the library. But that one's finished. We'll finish off with the heavily polished titanium metal. It'd be similar to this, but it'll have all these oxides I spoke about. So I come in here, file, open, titanium metal. I haven't etched it. S means sputter. I didn't sputter it. Someone gave me a highly polished titanium super clean, so I ran it open. Here it is. Look at this. This is the carbon. So this is even worse than the titanium dioxide. We've got something there. We can add that in a minute. So I Again, you can see, go into the library, periodic table, find the peaks. It says it's got some ruthenium. Rubbish. Again, the sodium's not there. It does have some argon because I think it was cleaned at one stage by argon etching. See that little peak there? So I'll leave that in. And it says it's got a little bit of nitrogen. So we can go now, create regions, get rid of this, all the lines, come up into here, go into here, get rid of this one, go into regions, apply. Well, there's not much nitrogen, one in a hundred. Um, we can now zoom in and come up, open up this, zoom into our oxygen, let's see, and see if it got the area right, not too bad come down in the zoomed in mode. Ooh, little adjust this a little bit. Oh, I've got to go into region. Won't let me do it unless I was in region. Good. Come down here. Oh, there's a little nitrogen. 
and then come down further uh, carbon. So that's finished. Zoom out. Come into here. Let's do here. This oxygen looks similar. Slightly different to the TiO2 because region create. We'll do this quickly. Just bring the thing. Bring this in. Component create. Now this has got to be less than that. It's trying to be 1.3. I'm going to make it about 1.1. That's better. I'm going to give them a bit of freedom. 1.1, 1 1.3. Uh, bring this one down a bit. Can't grab the top. Yes, I can. See, 1.1 1 is not too bad. See, it's a nice fit. Because I know there's one big peak there. Copy and paste. Bring this to the side. Bring the new one down into here. Bring this one back. I like to keep them in order, so I click this one copy and paste, bring this one to the side, this one down into here, and into here, fit. Similar to before. Come then into the region again, go into the type, we'll do the carbon, region create. Come in here, component create. Uh, looks like it might be about 1.2, so I come in here, 1.2, yeah, that looks a bit better. I'll just give it a little bit of freedom. 1.2 comma 1.3, copy. Again, it looks similar to the other two. Standard, what they refer to as adventitious carbon. No specific source, just comes from the atmosphere. Copy and paste. Bring this one to the side, this one in here. And take this one, copy and paste. Bring this one to the side, bring this one into here. Get them approximate, that's not too bad. Fit components. Good, we've got a knife. Wow, look at the titanium. This peak. This is the difference between TI4 and TI0. This is the metal. So there's a rather thick oxide layer on the surface. It was super clean and shiny and polished. And yet, to me, it's got something like 60 or 70 Armstrongs of oxide on it. It is so reactive, titanium. If you take silicon, it'll only develop about 15 Armstrongs. If you take aluminium, always got about 40 or 50 Armstrongs. Protects the aluminium, instantly oxidized. Now I've got to fit this very carefully. So this is advanced fitting. Okay, I'm just going to show you what to do so you get a bit of a feel for it. Region again, I've got to go create. Good, I'm using a Shirley background. I'm bringing it into here and I'm bringing it into here. Good. Now, I know that this is a metal peak, but I must have two of them. So I'm going to go component create. I'm going to do them, I like doing them in this order. But we'll bring this ping down into here. Metal peaks are always much narrower than their oxides. So here it's gone 1.2, it's too wide. So I'm going in, for the titanium metal and make it about 0.9 and see what sort of a fit I get there on the side. That's not too bad. I bring it in. I've made a little note here to what I've used. No, I haven't. Well, that's all right. I'll give it now not much restriction, so I'm coming in here. Position. A full width half maximum constraint, which is here. I'm going to let it go from 0.8 comma to say 1. 1.1 1 .1 I might make it. Enter. 
Now I'm going to go copy and paste. And I'm going to take this one out and bring the next one up here. This is where I need to have my titanium knowledge. The two peaks apart, remember they've got to be in the ratio 2 is to 1, and the distance apart I've got to fix. And I know for the metal that I've found that they're 5.54 apart. So I come up here into position constraint. See that here? And I'm going to make B A plus 5.54 enter. And I'm also going to make B half the size of A. So I come into area constraint for B here and I'm going to go A times 0.5. Good. Now I've got these two peaks locked together. They call it an ensemble. So now when I move one, the other one will move. Keep the same distance. You watch when I move this one. The other one will follow. See that? Now I needed to do that because this is made up of three or four more sets of two. This is really complex fitting. There's another big one there for the TIO2. Okay, I might put those in now. So then I can go copy and paste. I move this one to the side and I'm going to bring the next one into here. I'll bring this one up into here. And you can see that this is going to be much, much wider. So I'm going to come up into here and give this a width of something like 1.8. Bring it into here. It's going to be even wider. So I come up here. Now this one, I didn't I change it to one. I didn't push enter. I'll make it two. Enter. Oops, input error. What was I doing? Full width, half maximum constraint. Oh, I'm going to make it 1.8 comma 2.5. Grab this peak, oops, zoom back out. We're coming in here and in here. I'm just going to go fit at the moment. Oops, doesn't want to do it, why not? Components. Oh. Maybe I should bring this one down into here, bring this one back. And I'll continue with my fitting along this way. Copy and paste. Bring this one to the side. Bring another one in here. Bring this one back. I'm trying to get a bit of a fit myself. Then I'm going to go copy and paste. Bring this one here. This one up into here. Now I'm getting somewhere. This one down into here. And I'll go fit. That still doesn't want to do it for some reason. What? E times G times 0.5. I've got to make this width. This width has to be rather large because they are. I'll make that three. No, nope, doesn't want it. Got to bring this down into. Oops, bring this one down. See, this is not so easy. I've got to. These are much wider peaks than these. I think a T. I might have to put in another set. I think. Bring this one down into here and then I might go create and create. Then I'll go fit. Aha, getting somewhere. <coughs> now I can look at the error, see well, what sort of error have I got here? Not too bad. Uh, this one's gone a bit wide and I didn't particularly want that. But I'm just showing you, I then need have to go in and start restricting them. But now I'm going to shift them all to see if we got the right value for the metal, this one, the right value for the oxide. In here are all these other oxides. So I go in here, double click, double click, double click, come in here, look at them all. Make sure you've got them all in there. Okay. 
I'm going to get rid of this error that's on each one. This one, get rid of it. These just toggle on and off. Now I'm going to put on here a summary. Shift them first. Click the carbon, click this one. Come up here into processing, calibration, component, and with 284.8. It's nearly that because this was a clean piece of metal and it was nicely mounted metal to metal. So there's only been a slight correction. Region, component, applied to selection. Now I put on here a summary. Come up here, annotation, a quantification, exclude font, what have I got? Nine, I'll be okay, apply. Ooh, I got lots of titanium. I've got one here, 453.5. Where do I say the metal comes in? 454.1. So it's not too bad. The TiO2, which is the big one, uh, 458.6. This is the big one here. A TI 458. So maybe my charge correction with this sample is not the right one. Okay? because it was a clean metal, very clean. So maybe I should have used something else if I wanted to get 458. But then I've got all these different things. If I come into the titanium then, I've got to start labelling this. This is the 2P three halves of zero, the metal. Enter, and this is the 2P one half of the metal. This one's the 2P three halves of probably oxidation state two. This one's the 2P, uh, come along here. This is the 2P one half because there's two peaks asso associated with each, each, in, each individual oxidation. So this is complex. And I may spend a couple of hours sorting it out. Again, that's a full summary I need to look. And oxygen's coming from mainly from this one. There's all these other intermediate oxidation states. The carbon's got a bit of um, oxygen. I can put then the thing on here. Got lots of carbons and there's a bit of carbon oxygen things as well. So that again's a summary. I'll just open up what I, I've, I've done this before, um, process data. Let's see what I got polished. Here it is, similar. And then I go one, two, three. And let's look at it here, four. I spent a bit more time, oops, one, two, three. So I've labelled them all here again, you see. You've really got to get into it and adjust the widths and this is complicated. And you'd only need to do this if you were dealing with, you know, chemistry of titanium oxides on titanium metal. <laughs> okay. And this again has interfered with things a bit. But it's good to have. I've again used 284.8 today. No, this one hasn't been shifted at all. I didn't bother shifting this, and I've got this one at four, 459. It should be at 458.6. So I think using 285 would have been better for this carbon on this metal. That's just my impression. So the carbon on the metal, with the, some oxide, has a slightly different value to the carbon on the nice clean titanium dioxide powder. So always remember that what you use, note it down and put it in any publication. You tend to look at what other people have used and say, well, they're all using 284.6. So you use that or 284.8.